Who would have thought that the frontman of Emperor, one of the flagship bands of the second wave of black metal, would go on to become an artsy hipster who looks like he's related to Julian Assange? Did not see that coming. Yes, today we are ranking the full-length solo albums of Ishan, and we're starting with The Adversary in 2006. Let it all come down! This is the first in a conceptual trilogy and extremely stylistically diverse. Invocation giving me some Opeth vibes on the clean parts, like the use of strings. Called by the Fire has a bit of dream theater energy. Similar notes for the Hammond organ heavy Homecoming, which features a guest appearance from Garm of Ulver. More strings on Astera, giving it a dramatic Broadway musical feel. More on that later. Panem et Circenses has a bit of an avant-garde black metal vibe, but compared to Psy or Arcturus. The Pain is Still Mine is a pretty impressive epic progressive closer too at over 10 minutes. Unfortunately, Ishan's voice sounds rough on this album. The screams have this very strange squelchy quality that feels like nails on a chalkboard to me, and then the cleans lack much presence or technique. He even gets a little yarly on Citizen, which I find a little embarrassing. Personally, I don't care much for this one. I respect the creativity and some of the performances, most of which are provided by Ishan himself, except for the drums, which come courtesy to see a Borknagar's Asgire Mickelson over the entire trilogy. But it doesn't come together for me, and the worst parts almost ruin it completely. So, good things, not so great things, it's going to okay tier. Then we have Angle in 2008. The experience gained from the debut and two years between these albums really seems to have benefited going into this sophomore effort. The production feels fuller, performances tighter, and Ishan's vocals have already slightly improved. Lars K. Norberg also joins on Fretless Bass. Strong opener with the massive symphonic elements of Misanthrope alongside more killer riffing. And speaking of Opeth, on the last album, Ackerfeld actually makes an appearance here on the even more Opeth-sounding Unhealer, a tone that also carries over into Threnody. Love the harsher black metal tones of Malediction and the proggy cyclical sounding guitar riffs of Alchemist and rising tension of the appropriately titled Elevator. Fantastic closer with Monolith as well. Still some issues with pacing with sections that feel like they drag on a bit too long and while Ishan's vocals have improved I still wouldn't call this his best performance by any stretch. Still big step up from the debut all around I'm putting this one at great tier. And then we got After in 2010. The final album of this planned trilogy and Ishan's first album to use eight string guitars. Another strong opener in the barren lands. It feels like we as the listener are making a climb up some incredible mountain. Jorgen Munkaby of Shining also plays saxophone on this and a few other albums as on the wonderfully chaotic A Grave in Verst. Again, tracks like this have me dying for a collab with Psy. Frozen Lakes on Mars is a banger that once more draws comparisons to Enslaved, particularly albums like Rune. Same goes for the Big dramatic build and use of organ on Austere, going into the equally powerful Heaven's Black Sea and twists and turns of Closer on the Shores. Still some parts I find a little dull, namely the drifty first half of Undercurrent, though once more the saxophone part is a highlight there, and I like how it really broadens out from that point. So this one... I'm going to also put it at great tier. Y'all, we have plenty more albums to go, but if you're enjoying the video so far, hit the like button and comment below your favorite and least favorite Ishan albums and why. But next up, we have Aramita in 2012. Latin for Hermit, which was something Ishan related to as an introvert. He described this album as bleak and desolate with influences from Nietzsche, who is even pictured upside down on the cover. Tobias Ornace Anderson taking over on drums, opening on a very dream theater note with Arrival continuing to sound grander and grander. Vocals continuing to get stronger too, moving into a more operatic style, and with Einar Solberg of Leprous making an appearance. Introspection is another proggy, enslaved-sounding track featuring Devin 
Devin Townsend, while The Grave is a big, doomy, lumbering giant with more chaotic saxophone drawing comparisons to Dreadnought. Departure is another personal favorite, getting both super heavy and a little jazzy, and features Ishan's wife and Einar's sister, Heidi S. Tveiten. Not completely in love with the more laid-back elements of Catharsis and The Eagle and the Snake, the latter is another one that gets better the further you get into it, including a solo from Jeff Loomis, but it just takes a little bit too long to really get going. At times, this is a step up from the last one in terms of production, but I think from front to back, I was more consistently engaged with the songwriting of the previous record, so I'm putting this one at good too. Which brings us to Das Seelenbrechen in 2013. <laughs> Ishan was quoted calling this album a deliberate sidestep from the previous efforts to shake things up and step outside of his comfort zone. As such, there is a lot of improvisation leading to the tracks presented here, leaning further into an avant-garde style. The title is a German word made up by Nietzsche, referring to losing yourself in a place beyond perception. It also makes me think of David Lynch's use of transcendental meditation to freeform conjure ideas from a sort of dream world. Josh, we never get any time to experiment. We never get to, you know, go dream or anything. This was actually the album that ultimately put Ishan's solo work on my radar as critics were raving about it at the time, but frankly my early listens back then couldn't live up to the enormous hype surrounding it, though I respect it much more now. Love these super dramatic symphonic elements and classic prog sensibilities of opener Hilber, great track for opening up an arena performance or even Carnegie Hall. The piano focus Reagan is another opethy sounding one before it takes another orchestral turn. More fun classic prog energy and dynamic engaging arrangements on NA CL or sodium chloride, salt, and tacit features some killer performances across the board. Ishan's wife Heidi again shows up here providing choir. Still, some parts I'm less in love with, like the kind of massive attack sounding pulse, which has ideas I think he much more effectively integrates on the next album. Then there are the really experimental moments like C and Tacit 2, which may showcase Tobias's abilities as a drummer in a big way, but don't make for my favorite re-listening experience. I do like the dreamlike vibes of M, though. Funny that I'm digging this album album a lot more now, as it feels like audience opinions may have decreased over time with this now the lowest rated Ishan album on Metal Storm with a 7.6, but yeah, I'm putting it at fantastic. And then we got Arctis in 2016. <laughs> Lead single Pressure really got me hyped for this album, and fortunately, it's just one of the many instant classics for me here. Arctis does an incredible job of balancing Ishan's harsher black metal roots while maintaining many marks of his continued maturation and experimentation. From the get-go, Disassembled sets a strong note, blackened harsh vocals, powerful clean singing, and proggy riffs all drawing comparisons to his Norwegian brethren enslaved, again with Einar Solberg making another guest appearance. Mass Darkness picks up the pace with rocking beats, soaring hooks, and some ripping solos that sound like a far more fleshed out version of Children of Bodom. This also marks Ishan's first collab with Matt Heafy of Trivium, years before they would go on to co-create Rashomon. Once more, throughout the course of this album, you are going to hear a lot of different sounds and styles. Organ accompaniment on My Heart is of the North, strange and almost danceable electronics on South Wind and Frail, smooth jazz fusion on Crooked Red Line, one minute it's black metal Radiohead, the next it's a powerful musical. And yet there is a unifying concept that somehow brings all of these elements together into a cohesive work. I saw a lot of love for this album in the comments, and on that, we are very much on the same page. So even if you disagree with some of my placements here, I'm hoping a lot of us can agree that Arctis, it's perfection. You're goddamn right. They followed it up with Amur in 2018. Probably mispronouncing that along with a lot of things on this video, but given how much I loved that last album, this one had a tough act to follow. But I'd say it falls somewhere stylistically between the last two albums, exhibiting the experimentation and focus on atmosphere of Das Seelenbrechen, but within the more conventional framework and melodrama of Arctis. There does seem to be an increased emphasis on electronic elements, particularly on tracks like In Rites of Passage that feel like natural evolutions of south winds, while also taking new and interesting turns. Also love the synth line of Lend Me the Eyes of Millennia that opens this album up. Opest Friedrich Ackeson 
Jackson also provides an additional guitar solo on Arcana Imperi. Love the doomy, menacing guitars and spooky effects of One Less Enemy. More enslaved energy on Marble Soul and Wake makes for a banger of a closer. It plays out like a deranged musical orchestrated in tandem by Freddie Mercury and Andrew Lloyd Webber, filled with multi-textured musical arrangements, a wide variety of emotional tones, and of course, the occasional black metal flair that we all know and love. Instrumental performances soar, and Ishan's vocals are often worthy of Broadway. Not as good as Arctis, but it's up there. I'm gonna put this one at fantastic. Before we get to the self-titled record, some EP shoutouts for Telemark, Pharos, and the Fascination Street Sessions. Some really great songs in those worth checking out as well from this period, but we're sticking to full lengths here. So that brings us to Ishan in 2024. <laughs> Going all in with the orchestral elements here, which made me very happy starting this thing up, and in a way it's kind of like full circle given that his work with Emperor basically set the blueprint for symphonic black metal. Kicking off with a pretty epic intro before transitioning into the Voivod meets classical energy of Promethean Spark, which became another instant favorite for me, very infectious and a stellar vocal performance too, with the perfect balance of harsh and clean. And it only gets more massive from there with Pilgrimage to Oblivion and Twice Born going full John Williams in corpse paint. Absolutely massive stuff. Seriously, Ishan did not half send anything on this record. These compositions easily rival anything that Septic Flesh, Flesh God Apocalypse, or Dimmu Borgir have ever put out. A Taste of the Ambrosia takes things down for a bit, but then really ramps up the tension in the second half. And I don't want to repeat myself or spoil too much, so I won't go into every track, but I'll also shine a light on the Black and Broadway musical-worthy Blood Trails to Love, and Hubris and Blue Devils, which sounds like a psychedelic circus performance colliding with the psycho theme. Really incredible stuff and easily the most ambitious sounding record so far. It lacks some of the more surprising and diverse twists of Arctis, but frankly, this has quickly become my second favorite Ishan record. It is going to perfection. Y'all check out this playlist for plenty more black metal tier lists. In particular, if you enjoy Ishan's stuff, you should also check out the Enslaved tier list, one of my favorite bands of all time. Again, comment below your favorites, your least favorites, but that'll do it for now. Flight of Icarus signing off. I will see you in the trenches.